Hi, Cat's Cradle here. I just got through folding a lotus to close and was going through my husband's socks and noticed that there were some with holes and so I cut the tops off and have made collars here to go on my canning jars and as I'm sitting here doing this, I just cannot get uh, the nagging feeling out of uh, the, na the nagging feeling out of my mind that I should make this video. I thought about making it on Sunday, and now I just and now I'm just going to do it. And um, I, I got I got the idea after oh probably last week. I heard some some research on BPA. And then I listened to a um, a broadcast where someone made a short informational video on BPA, and then we got our uh, Mother Earth News, our our most recent edition. And the night after I listened to that informational uh, video, I opened uh, my Mother Earth News, and there is this article on "Is There Poison in Our Food?" concerns about BPA. I'm going to post the link because you'll see see this picture here. This is the exact picture here. Actually, the entire article is posted on uh, MotherEarthNews.com, so you can read it in its entirety. And I highly encourage you to do that. Don't believe what I say. Go and read this for yourself. Now, I know you're probably thinking, "Hey, uh, Cat's Cradle, that BPA is probably not good for us. That isn't news." Well, yeah, that's true, but there's a little more information in here than I had before, and I want to share some of the highlights uh, with you uh, in case you don't have time to go read it yourself, but please, please do make time. This article was written uh, on, uh, it's actually an interview with Frederick Von Saul of the University of Missouri's Endocrine Disruptor Group, and he's, criti he's highly critical of BPA. Uh, and here's what he, some of what he has to say, <clears throat> that BPA is uh, the sort of hard, clear plastic that's often found in water bottles. It's also uh, the epoxy resin that's used to line aluminum soda cans and steel cans that contain your soup, beans, and vegetables. And if you look in some of your cans, uh, you'll notice that there is a liner in them. Uh, in fact, uh, I'm still working, made a video last week where she's reusing cans uh, to store dry beans and such. And as she was showing uh, where she had taken the lid off, she kind of pulled some of this uh, stretchy material uh, that she says, oh, it, you know, it must be glue holding the lids together or something. Well, it's, it's the BPA is what it is. And it is kind of stretchy and elastic, and it does kind of look like glue when you pull on it. Um, so, in the section that says, what's so bad about BPA, he says, I believe research has shown this chemical contributes to many of the epidemics in the world, cancer, obesity, diabetes, heart disease, and immune dysfunction, including asthma and allergies. It causes early puberty, and you can look that up. That's called precocious puberty. Uh, I did a, a great deal of study on that last year. I'm... Uh, the parents' is teacher uh, coordinator uh, for my school district, and I teach parents how to parent. And I had a couple parents that had real concerns that their very, very young girls uh, were developing breasts. And they said, you know, what do we do? We've got second graders that, you know, that, that have breasts in our district. And uh, as I did the research, not only are they probably getting, uh, it's probably not only caused from uh, the BPA, leaching into our, the breakdown of BPA leaching into our food, but also all the hormones that are giving, given to uh, the animals we eat, beef uh, namely. Uh, <clears throat> so, so this BPA is contributing to uh, early puberty, the damage of every part of the reproductive system, including uterine fibroids and ovarian and breast cancer. In male animals, it's causing lower sperm count, prostate cancer, and abnormalities of the urethra as the animal ages. Um, it's been linked to attention deficit, hyperactivity disorder, some learning disabilities, and social behavior disruption. It causes the brain of a young animal, listen to this, to look like a senile aged adult, and it causes impaired memory. Pretty scary stuff. So why is it in so many products? 
the problem occurs um, when the BPA is exposed to high temperatures or, okay, we knew the high temperatures. We knew you weren't supposed to, you know, heat foods in, in things that had BPA, but here's the kicker. Or in a bit of an alkaline environment, it causes the BPA bonds to break apart. And when the molecules break apart, they become a hormone. And the hormone mimics estrogen. Uh, when this guy did his research, they started off using doses that were 25,000 uh, 25, times lower than anybody had ever studied before. So really low, low doses of this stuff. When they published their findings, the chemical industry went after them. He says all the manufacturers called us up and threatened us. Dow sent someone down who said, uh, can we arrive at a mutually beneficial outcome where you don't publish this paper? Well, too late. The paper had already been accepted. Um, he said there was another study done a long time ago that mothers in the 40s and 50s, I'm trying to get this print up where I can see it because it's so small, mothers in the 40s and 50s were given a drug called diethylstilbestrol, D-E-S, and lots of weird things happened. They had a three-fold increase in breast cancer. It took them 50 years to see that, okay? Uh, their uteruses were shaped like hourglasses. So after 50 years, they saw these problems. BPA, he said, is actually as potent and in some cases more potent than DES. But they didn't see it for 50 years. And we haven't been studying BPS for that, uh, BPA for that long. He says, now there's more than 1,000 studies from both independent and industry funded sources. Now guess, folks, just guess how many of the industry studies say that BPA is safe. 100% of them, 100%. He says there's 100,000 chemicals in commerce uh, today that the U.S. regulates. Uh, but in 1970, it grandfathered in 62,000 chemicals, including BPA, through the Toxic Substances Control Act. So BPA is totally outside the regulatory system. There's no regulation of BPA. Now, something interesting happened in January of 2010. The Food and Drug Administration did something remarkable. It reversed its stand on BPA and said that it's not safe. Now, that was a huge breakthrough. However, the government conceded that this chemical, uh, uh, hold on, I lost my place. Oh, but it said, because this chemical is grandfathered in, we can't ban it or regulate it. We don't even have the authority to go after the chemical company. Uh, scary. Why? Probably because it's a $10 billion a year product. Companies don't give up when that kind of money's at stake. You know, as is true in most cases, just follow the money here and you'll find out what's true. Every chemical, every drug, follow the money and it will tell you the outcome of the research. Independent scientists find harm, but none of the industry and corporate labs have any standing whatsoever in the scientific community. Their research is pathetic because it uses techniques that are 40 to 50 years old. Well, heck yeah, they're using those old techniques. They don't want to find anything wrong with it. And he concludes with, right now, it's the most studied chemical in the world. The National Institutes of Health have $30 million worth of ongoing studies of this chemical. Do you think federal officials in Europe, the United States, Canada, and Japan would all have this as the highest priority chemical to study if there were only a few alarmists saying it was a problem? This is a problem, folks. And I read yesterday another study that said all these people that are saying BPA-free because now, now word's getting out that it's not safe and people are finding out that all these all this money is going to study this product. So now people are putting on their, um, on their packaging BPA-free. Uh, the report I said, read yesterday said, don't believe that, do not believe that, that uh, the chemicals are still being put in, but that BPA-free is the new thing uh, to put on your label. Uh, I have uh, quit drinking. Uh, we don't drink any soda from a can anymore. Uh, because they have the liner in them, and now we know that we shouldn't even be drinking them out of the plastic bottles. Probably best to just to give them up altogether. And I will not be purchasing any more tomato products in uh, 
in canned form anymore. It's another, it's just another reason why we should be home canning our tomatoes uh, because the high acid foods tend to cause that BPA, that chemical to break down and that synthetic estrogen to be leached into the food. So I will not be, you know, and I've, I really have been uh, a champion of canned tomato sauces and canned spaghetti sauce and that kind of thing because it's much safer to keep on your shelves and less likelihood of breakage than a glass jar, uh, you know, spaghetti sauce. But uh, I'm, I'm reversing that. I'm not buying any more tomatoes in cans. I will home can it or I will buy it in jars. Uh, I think this is something to be avoided uh, as much as you can. Um, I certainly would not use anything in plasticware from China whatsoever because there's no labeling there at all. Uh, and they, they absolutely put anything in their plastic they want to. But uh, all these people I see walking around drinking bottled water out of these plastic bottles, I mean, we're just being inundated with this BPA. Please do the research. Please read this article. Uh, it's, it's astounding uh, and, and took my breath away. Just wanted to get that out to you. Please go online. I'll post the link from MotherEarthNews.com uh, on this uh, eye-opening article. Um, we just can't be too careful, and I mean, I don't want to be an alarmist and, and think there's, you know, the boogeyman's lurking around every corner, but gosh, you know, all the junk that's in our food, it's just, it's amazing, and I don't think it's by accident. Uh, check it out. Cat's Cradles.